You can hear me. You're, I can hear we're, you. We're I can see you. Love me live in the flesh. So first things first, we here at mm -hmm. the Jasmine Brand, I'll speak for everyone, huge fans. I'm a writer and a correspondent for the Jasmine Brand, but just on a personal side, my name is Demi. I've been watching the show personally since its inception. And mm -hmm. so the first thing I want to say is you are the creator, the executive producer, and a castmate. So yeah. it's kind of like you're giving me like Shawnee vibes, like how she did with Basketball Wives. How involved are you in the behind the scenes of the show? Because you're on the cast, but then yeah. you're also executive producer and creator. So how much do you, you know, involve? how involved are you? Well, I'll tell you, you know, from the beginning, it's always been, you know, since inception of the show. It took me years to to pitch the show, get it picked up by multiple networks. I partnered with Purveyors of Pop, and I've always given them my ideas. I've always, you know, been a part of everything in front of the camera and behind the camera. But I will say that a lot of my ideas they use, but they do limit. They have always kind of, now that I think about it, um, limited my role in the actual boardroom, although they never limited my ideas and, and, and everything. So I've always been involved in a sense of trying to help the show go in the direction that we wanted it to go in. But I mean, they at the end of the day, when you work with a network and partner with someone, it's up to them to kind of bring it into fruition. So I think I've okay. been involved so now in I a sense of the direction. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Awesome. I'm sorry. So now I read the word that you actually were approached initially to be on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, I was approached about uh, being on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Love the show. I was a huge fan. Or I am a huge fan of Nene. I love Portia. Um, and, you know, my husband was just like, you know, I, my background is journalism. I was a producer in my hometown. I had my own yes. show in my hometown. So my husband said, you need to just get back to what you love. And, and, and that's writing. So I wrote Merit and Medicine about a show about the medical field, about people living, working, and playing with doctors in our community and the, the sacrifices that a lot of the spouses make so that their, you know, husbands or wives can, can go and save lives. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So now recently um, we've written about it and other blogs and things have written about it. You recently spoke out about uh, different treatment from your uh, white counterparts at Bravo. So do you mind kind of going into that a little bit? You said, because because a lot of people, I, think, I don't know if we wrote the story, but someone else wrote a story that you didn't get your contract yet. And so everyone was kind of like, well, right, I'm turning to the, returning to the show. And then you kind of said, I'm the first African-American, you know, EP, I believe you said, and why do people assume that I'm not returning for the eighth season? Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. I think just just to go from how it started, this show has always been my baby. Um, I, I partnered with Purveyors of Pop, and we partnered under the, under the pretense that this was going to be a hit franchise. So when I say I was the first, I'm not the first African-American executive producer at Bravo. I'm the first African-American female to be a franchise owner, you know, part of the franchise, you know, owning it, being an executive producer and ca being a cast member on it. So what I was saying is, why wouldn't I? This, I'm one of three people, me, Whitney from Southern Charm, as well as Whitney Vanderpump, I mean, uh, Lisa Vanderpump yeah. from, from Vanderpump Rules. So my whole thing is I was really perplexed and a taken back um, that I haven't been a part of some of the boardroom conversations and the fact that I hadn't received a contract or be involved in the direction of the of where the franchise is going. I think that um, it's important to understand this is my story. Like married to, I am married to medicine. And I don't say that, you know, I, it's the truth. Like we're in the midst of a pandemic right now that this yeah. is my life. This is my life, and I, I just wanted to share our story with the world. So I, I am a little taken back. I do believe that I have not been treated the way my parts have. And all I wanted, all I wanted is just to be treated. And 
asking for more okay. rights. I just want to. I just want equal rights as my white male counterparts. And hell, I just want to be respected and treated decent as a cast member. I don't even get that. Mm, I'm oh. treated worse than ever. Whether it's because, huh? I'm treated worse, and and I and they did it in front of the world. No. They've they've treated so me for. Um, someone has huh? made the connection. So you're a little you're a little grainy. Let's see if it evens out a little bit. Okay, okay, C coming back. It's coming back. It's a little grainy. Let's see. Let's see if it. Uh. Okay, that's better. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're having a an interesting connection today, but we're gonna make it happen. So, can you talk about if you got a contract now for season eight? No, I have not received a season eight contract. I don't see one coming, and I think the question is, Demi, why wouldn't I? If you see, mm -hmm. if what I'm saying is not true, think about it. I am entertaining. I'm a part of the show. Um, I'm, I'm a large, I've been a nucleus of this group for a long time. I bring it. I show up. I glow up. I blow up uh, as a cast member. You have to ask yourself why. Why, if all the people that wouldn't be involved, why would they not want me to be a part of? It doesn't even make sense. I think that they just work hard to exclude me versus including me. So I just want to make sure we understand that you are saying that you don't think you think that there is a chance that you will not be returning to season eight for Mary. I Frank. do. I don't I don't know. You know, it's, it's up to the network, but okay. I have not received a contract as it stands. And okay. I should have by now. Okay. Yeah. And I agree with mm -hmm. that. Because I mean, yeah. honestly, when you think of Mary to Medicine, you think of Mariah Huck. Like you literally I mean yes, I'm like, the first she's couple here. of seasons. She's here. Like the first couple of seasons for sure, it was mainly like Mariah Huff. So like I I couldn't imagine married to medicine without having you on. The Thank show. you. So hopefully mm -hmm. that changes. Well, you know, a lot of people have been saying they're gonna boycott Bravo. I don't know if that that's what we need to see what keeps happening, but we need to have you on season eight for sure. So now Thank we're you. talk a little bit about season seven because the reunion was crazy. Um uh -huh. the most the most explosive thing that I want to talk about was the entire drug scandal. Did that, because you said that it broke you in one episode and you were on uh, the reunion show breaking down about it and it feels like that really hurt you. But on the what I want to know is on a brand standpoint, do you feel like it messed up your brand or your reputation or anything, the whole drug scandal that happened last season? You know what? Honestly, um, Demi, I believe that I thought that was horrible. And that's one of my complaints about the network. And and I feel like the entire pretense of the show is to, de to, to diminish me as an executive producer, to denounce me, and to, you know, make sure they don't include me. I thought that the drug allegations was just a little too far. That's when I knew that they were really trying to, not only were they trying to push me out, they were trying to tarnish my reputation and make sure I could not work in Hollywood. It's already hard as a black woman in this business. I've never done drugs before in my life. And the fact right. that they would allow someone to make those allegations and do it on air, make those allegations, follow that story when they knew they were false. I just thought yeah. it was horrible. And that just gives credence to what I'm saying. Like, why would they allow that? And now not getting a contract, I believe they knew that they were, were trying to push me out all along. Right. I just didn't get the memo. I just didn't hmm. know it. So let's talk about that moment because that was like just crazy. Like, I mean, for you to have to live through that, did it yeah. you personally though? Like, because you said it was absolutely it was okay. Because yeah, you know, it, it, it absolutely far, did. But mm -hmm. personally, yeah. how did it affect you? I think it affects you. A bit. I mean, I'm a, I'm a mother before anything. I'm a woman, but I'm a mother, and it's I'm a mother of teenage kids, and that's not my life. It affected me because I believe wholeheartedly in being authentically me, and I've always been that. So to even elude that I would right. do drugs off camera or I have this other lifestyle, to me, it just, that's not who I am. I mean, it's like they try to throw these stereotypes out about successful Black women. That's, I've never done yes. drugs. I've never been, that's not my life. So, yeah, it broke me down as a woman. It did, because Absolutely. I go against that. That's not who so, I am, and it did. Well, that's great to hear. We're actually happy to hear you because I, that was like my biggest thing that I wanted. To Jesus, my thing, my, my my tripod that I wanted to ask you about was about the drug scandal because I mean it seemed like I I liked when Andy asked 
Did anyone in the cast even believe that it was true? No, it seemed like no one believed it. So that was good to know. What did that feel like to know that no one in the cast really honestly, truly believed that you would ever do drugs? Did that feel good? That, I, I don't know that they carry much weight with me because you have to think this is a medical show. And to take okay. it a step further, this is a, this is a show where we're affiliated to doctors. You have to think I also was a drug rep, a pharmaceutical rep. So they okay. know that that's just far from who I am. The fact that that was even a story was crazy to me that any of these doctors, their wives, their family members would go along with that being right. associated with this show, with, with, with what I created. That couldn't have been further from the truth. So them saying, I don't believe it, I mean, it should have been shut down. They should have said from the beginning, this is BS, this is not who we are as women that are connected to medicine, whether it's our husbands or us, not like drugs. That was just too crazy for me. It was so a little now, too crazy for me. Someone in the comments just said they fired Phaedra for it, but not Quas. How, how do you feel about that? That's intense. I, thought it, I, I feel like it was a double standard. I thought it was a double standard. And, you know, they were, what people were calling for the firing of Quad, I wanted the other executive producers to take drug tests. I'll be honest with you, because I felt like I, it wasn't about the cast at that, at, at that point. As a black woman, I worked hard to be where I am, and I would not lose it all on drugs or anything like that. So I just I really it. felt like, I felt like, you know what, they are really attacking everything I've built. And, I, and, and, it, and it bothered me. So I, I thought it was a double standard because they didn't hold her accountable. And not only did they not hold her accountable, they allowed her to do media interviews saying that I showed up to work on drugs. Now, why would they allow her to say that they later it retracted the story from OK Magazine? But I thought that um, for me, that let me know, you know what, this production company is really out for blood. Because why would so they allow that? That's true. I totally agree. Now, someone else in the comments just said that you need your own show. Would that ever be something? I mean, because you created one show. So is this an opportunity maybe to start something new, create your own? I mean, you, you yes. are a writer, producer. Yes. Do we, is there something in the works, maybe? Yes, there is. I, you know, I do my, I do my show, Destination Diva, about traveling. I'm working on a vacation crasher show. I have some other things going, but I think I want people to understand it's not just about starting another. It's about fighting for the franchise that's rightfully mine. I love it. This is so a multi-million dollar franchise. People have to understand that, and and I'm not going to give it away because I have okay. not sold. Woo! I like that. So you're yeah, saying, we're not going to just move on and let it go. You're going yeah, to fight for what you believe in. Because you created Yes, it, we so. are. Yeah. Okay. Because we have so stamina. Yeah, we have stamina. Ooh, mm -hmm. I love it. So, so <laughs> and we have exactly, the What exactly would you like to see come from Bravo, come from you standing your ground and saying how you really feel and standing up for yourself? What would you like to see from Bravo? You know, that's a great question. And I've thought about it and I prayed about it. Because this is a tough stance to take. Because I actually loved being at the Bravo Network. I always wanted to be a part of it. What I'd like to see from NBC Universal, from Bravo, from Fremantle, and more than anything, from purveyors of pop, is them for, for them to have understand that you don't have to be white or to have balls to be in the boardroom. Mm. It's it's not a privilege. It's what it's what we're like. I'm the same thing as my counterpart. I don't get it. Like so, I want them to include me. I want to be treated equally. Equally, you know, not just in pay and creative decisions. I mean, I've worked hard for this. It's not a van. It's not vanity when you work hard for. It. I've worked hard to be here, yeah. and I think it's and I and I think it's very insulting to to expect me to not fight for what's rightfully mine. So I no, want them I to treat me equally. I don't think that's much to ask. I don't either. What mm -hmm. I want to know is, were you ever nervous? Because this is a scary, mm -hmm. it has to be a scary place to be in, you know, go, standing by yourself. But have you have been in ep episodes before standing by yourself? I know that you don't mind rolling solo with things. Was this a scary moment to stand up to the Bravo Network by yourself? Was it a scary thing going into it? Well, you know what, to be honest, I haven't looked at it like that. Because okay. like I said before, 
it really isn't it wasn't it's not necessarily bravo that i'm going against it's the production okay. company okay. but it's bravo that has the control and the power to change things and have the obligation and responsibility to step in and say this is wrong and we will not be complicit and you discriminating against this young lady whether it's because of her title her gender her religion or whatever it is so it's not it's it was scary initially but I believe in having faith over fear. And I believe good always wins in the end. And I have the truth on my side. If I, if my story along, alone has been, it's been tough. They have yeah. made it a living hell for me. And the fact that I'm still standing and pushing through, let me know that God is with me every I step of the way. Mm -hmm. So now um, if you, if, for all the viewers watching the end of season seven, the reunion, um, when Andy asked you, who did you want to make amends with? You said, you know what? I have forgiven everyone. Um, yeah. And so one person, the, the relationship between you and Quad has taken many ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster ride. And yeah. so I did notice that it, in the beginning of the uh, the reunion, you guys kind of were, had some, some friction, but then towards the end, I think you like opened your skirt and you guys like had some laughs. So like, where do you guys the relationship stand? No laughs? No, 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 that's not true. She She actually came up to me in okay. the middle of the reunion, I was taking a picture. I was in the center of the picture and they have video of it. And she came up to me and said in front of everybody, I want to stand next to my old best friend. I love her okay. so much. Yeah. You know, so this is, I don't have any beef with or quarrels, quarrel, quarrel, quarrels with any of those ladies. Yeah, I, I'm not upset. There's not like, it's so, we're just, it's so many bigger things going on yeah. in the world. today. That stuff is petty. Like, I'm not mad at her. I didn't like the allegation she made. But you know what? So be it. I know who I am. I stand in my truth. I've, I've been consistent since day one. So I'm not mad at her. I'm not even mad at the rest of the ladies for not standing by my, by my side right now. I get it. They're in an awkward situation. Right. So I, I'm not mad at them. I'm, I'm, I just, I don't look at it like that. You know, I just think we're going on. It's a different chapter and it's bigger right. fish. We have bigger fish bigger to fry. Fish to fry. As I black agree. women, we do. Now, before we just wrap up the little piece about Quad, did you get a chance to text her about her baby? Congratulations and stuff. Are you guys on that kind of terms? Or no, no. You know what? I would have loved to, but honestly, I felt like it wouldn't be received coming from me. And you okay. know, people have to be at a place where they'll receive it and know that it's it's real. And I'm very happy for her. You know. If indeed she adopted a baby, I, I'm, I'm happy for her. I think that's huge. And I, I think children just do, they make you mature. They, I mean, they change everything for you. They, my children changed my life. Speaking so I think it's a blessing. Speaking of mm -hmm. your children, I saw you, uh, pro saw them protesting. Uh, yeah. About protesting with them. Now, I yeah. feel like, I forgot where you said it, but it was important for you to, you know, raising Black children yeah. to show them the importance of what's going on in the world right now how did that deal with this national pandemic of you know social injustice happening in the world right now tell us about the importance of teaching them young about social inequalities and you know and how important that is to children that are young versus waiting until they get older and don't understand like because you're very very serious about that well it's really tough because i feel this is we're in a very peculiar time we're yes. fighting two pandemics, social yes. injustice, and then you have COVID-19, yes. you know? And so it's tough because I look at my children and I think, you know, they're the future. And I, I, would, I would have had no idea that they will be fighting the same social injustice that our, that our ancestors did years ago. So it's tough to be dealing with this at, in 2020. It really is, I have to be yes. honest with you. But I, I, I recognize and I, understand the importance of teaching them now that it doesn't matter about how much money you have how much education you have how classy you think you are you are still black and every right. opportunity people get to show you that to treat you like a second class second class citizen they will and i'm my life right now my situation is a perfect example of that so it's very important for me to let them know that they belong they are important and they matter. Okay, that's good. Someone is saying my last. My lashes are on, guys. Someone keeps saying. My yeah, wait a minute. My my lashes. Lashes here. So now, one other important part of the season that we have to talk about because mm -hmm. you felt like you didn't get a chance 
to um, talk about religion a lot and you felt like yeah. it was shut down. We have to talk about that. So now you're yeah. Christian and your husband is Muslim. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. That's not correct. Okay, I, me, no, it's not. I, I grew up Christian. I'm Muslim. And okay. I have been, and I have been for almost seventeen years. Yes. They haven't shown, they haven't shown that on the show. And I do think religion is something you have to be careful. I have always asked them to, you know, to respect whether it's Christianity. You have to think half of our family is Christian, half is Muslim. So religion, where it should bring people together, it does tear people apart. Mm. So it's something I've always embraced and wanted them to show because I'm a Southern girl. I have Christian roots. I love gospel music. I love the Lord. I believe that people call them different names and get and, and take different paths to get to the same place. But I don't think they've ever shown the true layers of our faith you know, our family and the way we've been able to successfully merge those things. Cause it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's and the fact life. that they, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. It has not been easy. Yeah. You know, my, I, I married into a family. My husband's one of seven and each one of his siblings with the exception of him and his younger brother had arranged marriages. Why wouldn't they want to explore those things and show my family. Why are they so afraid to show my family? That's, you know, it's, I don't get it. Why do it. you think that is? Someone in the comments just says, why didn't Bravo show it fully? Why do you think that, that do you think they were afraid to show a black woman, you know, Muslim from Christianity? What do you, what, what, I mean, I know it's a conspiracy theory because we don't exactly know, but what yeah. it was. You know, it, it, it brings me back to the place of why people that look like us have to be in the boardroom. When, when, when we are telling our stories, who can tell our stories better than us? Nobody. I believe that is because they just, they are so disconnected in some areas and don't even realize it, you know? And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. That's the right. sad part. My counterparts are white, you know, part of the, white males, and they have an image or notion of what black women are but they should uh, allow us to tell our own stories. They, and they've allowed some of the women to do that. They've just always been afraid for me to do that. And I don't understand why. So I think so, that they're just afraid that people uh, will like you and connect with you, honestly. Ooh, that's that's, think it could that's a message right there. Uh, yeah. That people are afraid that people are going to like you and connect with you. Cause that, yeah. Because people, it's a personality, you know, TV personality. Like personality, like not everyone has it. And that's, yeah, that's that is true. scary. Like having personality can be, you know, can 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 be scary to people that don't. So I agree with that. And we're in a business, honestly, where people seem to think, especially in this business, producers think co cookie cutter. They think they can duplicate and imitate you and make mm -hmm. another you. And it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't. It just it something. It's called it factor. It's called it for a reason because you don't see it often. And you have to have it. I love it. You gotta so have now, it. When you, yeah. <laughs> I mm -hmm. love it. Now, someone in the comments, um, they probably mm -hmm. missed the beginning part, um, but it's a good question, actually. They just said, how come you're not able to make decisions with your title? Because I guess for us, for the listeners, we're thinking creator, you know, executive yeah. producer, we're thinking you should be able I'm to go to be in. Able to. I should. Right. So I should. What, what do you think that, because I don't think I've asked that specifically, is having those titles why aren't you able to, you know, be able to just go in and be like, okay, I want to fire these people. I want to hire these people. It's my show. This is what I want to happen. Like, how come you're not able to make those decisions with the titles that you have? You know what? That's a great question. I'm supposed to be able to. Typically, you are. It's only, it's just the situation is different with me. Because even in my contract, I'm supposed to have a reasonable amount of creative control right. and creative exercise. Control. That's the question. Yeah, That's the creative question. control. Absolutely. They just, I mean, what can I do? It's like David and Goliath. You know, I try my best to input, you know, my ideas and insert what I believe. And I think our show is m much more successful when they actually take my advice. But I don't know. They just, they have just blocked me. If you mm. think they do me bad on camera, can you imagine what, what they do to me? when the cameras aren't rolling. So I have a good question for you. When you talk mm -hmm. about duplicating, because there is no duplicating Miss Mariah, we know that, no, it's that not. It cannot happen. 
So now the Married to Medicine LA franchise. So how is that? Well, do you have your hands in that as well? Or like, how does that work as far as like, were they able to literally take what you had? And, and you know what's so you know what's so funny about this? I don't even think you probably realize LA was not the first spinoff, or maybe you forgot. Most people have. This is that's the most hurtful part about this. No, I wasn't a part of it. I was supposed to be. They pretty much just hijacked it and did it without me. But before LA, you do know there was a Mirror to Medicine Houston, and they did that wrong as well, and that was canceled. And yeah, Houston what? is near and dear to my heart you're from because Texas, I have. Right. No, I'm not from Tennessee, but I have a lot of friends in the medical field that do very well. That's another black mecca, mecca for the medical field. So for me, they just did it all wrong. And it was no yeah. offense to that cast or anything, but it's what I'm saying. We need, as black women, a part of a sh black show or a minority show, we need to be in the boardroom when some of these decisions are being made because I, th they've taken my baby and just kidnapped it. Like, so, so yes, so Texas was canceled, L.A., and I think, you know, it's an okay cast in L.A., but right. they're doing it all wrong. Like, they're taking Atlanta to L.A. You know what? That's a whole West Coast vibe. It's different. You don't even have to do that. They sure. don't have to try to emulate anything that we do here. They're different. They do things a different way, and they should respect those ladies enough to let them stand on their own, and that's what I would have told them, ladies. So everyone in the comments right now, I don't know if you're getting a chance to read. Everyone is saying you should sue, 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 sue. Is oh, that a I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, how, so, yeah. So is it for monetary or is it for, like, name? What kind of things? What ca we don't know. Like, what can you sue for? You know, situation? I'm not going to talk about that part, but I'll tell you this. For okay. me, my, you know, my, my contract just ran out. I've, I've said things here and there. I've always been very careful, very professional with the with anything I've disseminated as it relates to the show. Okay. But for me, I don't want, as the first African-American woman to create a franchise, nobody should ever have to go through what I've, what I've been through with these people. They have treated me horribly to the extent of would not even allow me to wear a hijab when I want to do my, you know, uh, you know when I want to do my confessionals. You know, when I when we go on trips, when I went to Savannah, I was upset, not because of any of the women initially. They would not, they wouldn't, they only had pork to eat. Like, so I just want, for me, it's more about creating change for the next people and letting them know you're not going to just hijack my show and not give me anything or not, and not treat me accordingly and not allow me to be a part of the growth. So with the hijab, are they just say, do they say to you, no, you can't wear that? They say no? Or like, how does that, how well, they it, just, it happened once or twice. They just, I mean, the, I mean, the other, my counterpart just said it, he would throw, he said he would gag. If I did it, he would gag. I was going to do it in confessional. Or whatever. I said, I want to show people the other side that it can't exist. You know, I wanted people to know it's hard as hell. You have to think. If you go back and look at Merit to Medicine, I've always been covered for the most part. You go back and look at it. I didn't cover my head, but they, they, they even put me in situations. I'm going to give you an example. He told me, no, I couldn't wear it. He would gag and faint, and I would never be on TV again. That's what he said to me. Mm -hmm. But to give you an example, like when Jackie one year did something for a charity and they came to me about, about the bathing suit, they really made that a big deal. And they knew it was against my religion, if they knew it was. And it was so awkward because people thought I was just, being bad they, they, or just being negative or wasn't participating. And so it was disappointing to me because they knew that it went against everything that I believed in. I'm not saying I don't wear bathing suits, but I don't want to wear a bathing suit and plaster it in, on TV or, or, or on social media. That's just not my style. Mm -hmm. I always have on old dashiki or a caftan or, you know, I'll give yeah. you a little cleavage. I ain't yeah. saying I'm perfect. <laughs> but so they, they put out a lot of the things and just yeah. made it seem like I was being difficult. And I've always been professional. I've always been on time. And I've always showed up and glowed up. So they've made it really tough for me as an African-American Muslim woman. They really have. Wow. Oh, my goodness. You know it's, what? It's crazy. I, honestly, going into this, I think I've always just looked at you as like, and you are a strong, beautiful Black woman, successful. I've just looked at you to be you. so, like, so strong and, like, it just, it hurts me as, like, a fan, you know, to even know 
that, you know, someone that I look at to just be so like strong and, you know, just outspoken and a boss to have to go through something like this. Like, it's that's really, the tough part. It's really that's sad to see. Like, I because... mean, like, everyone in the comments, we're all like sad. That's the tough part because people look at it like they think you're being difficult or me. I've never, I've always, they can't say I've never, I've always been easy to work with. I'm not an angry black woman. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with who I am, but I'm very hurt with the way and that they've treated me. Yeah. And they did it. They, I mean, they humiliated me in front of the world. They allowed this young lady to go on there and accuse me of drugs they have treated me horribly and nobody stood up. So, you know, when I talk to the executives at, at Bravo and they say things like, you seem unhappy, I'm not unhappy, I'm unprotected. I'm unprotected. And it's, it's crazy that I even have to have this conversation. So it's, I'm strong, but I'm tired. Nobody should have to go through this. This is not normal. And I want my children to know that. When you own something, you're supposed to be a part of it. That's why we teach our children to, to own something. That's why in the, in, the, in the music business, rappers wanted to own their, you know, their own masters so we can be a part of the change and, be a, and have a part of that creative control. So that's why this is so hurtful. They're doing it in front of the world and just getting away with it. Getting away with it. It's like corporate bullying. So it you, I literally almost shed a tear, like my, yeah, my lashes weren't falling off earlier, they're about to come off now. But you know what you want to know, the, I think for us as viewers, is, and this is, I think this is the, the grand thing, this is, this is the biggest thing for us as viewers, we don't know what's real and what's not because it's reality TV. And so okay. I think just like me, just as a viewer, like I know that you know, seeing on, you know, on, on, on the reunion, seeing, you know, people crying and seeing the emotion and, you know, things going on, but we don't know if this is scripted. We don't know if this is just something that, you know, oh, you know, when the cameras go off that it's like, oh, child, girl, that was a crazy thing, wasn't it? Like, we don't know if it's really like, you know, that this is like really your life or because it's reality TV, if it's scripted or not. So like, this is so great to hear that like this is your real life this stuff is really happening to you because even me as a viewer as a set for seven seasons sometimes i'm like oh, i don't know if that was like you know we, we just don't know if it was written or scripted or you guys are like going out to tea after this after cut you know it's hard, it's hard to say did they tell them to say to do this because you have to keep in mind they always have me island so for the viewers for the people watching i don't know if they real or scripted i know i'm real i know who i am i can't make this up i can't like who i am i don't like sometimes you can visibly upset and seen because sometimes things are so far-fetched and so far to the left like the drug thing you know what i mean so sometimes things are just so off course for me you know it just it just doesn't make sense so some things I believe, not necessarily that it's scripted, I believe that people are coached and set up in scenes, walk into scenes a certain way and, and set up to do certain things. I mean, just think about what happened with me this season. How would I be the one pushed out? It doesn't even make sense. Like they spread, if they, they spread lies on me. I'm still married to medicine. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. The entire world is married to medicine right now. Why would they, like, just think about it. So some of it, I believe that it's, uh, it's more typecasting. And I think that these producers have in their mind who they want to succeed and who they want to block. And I just so happen to be one of those people. So it's, mm. I, you call it scripted as much as typecasting and them wanting to control the narrative. And instead of just letting it flow, we would have a hit show if they really just let it flow. You know, a group of black women together, baby, we give you some spice. We give you some spice and we, we, make, we, we have strong characters, charisma, give you a lot of comedy, and we're going to have conflict. But, I mean, yeah. they, they're so big on controlling who's friends and that these people on top and nobody likes this person. I mean, they, I mean, I believe that that's the reason why the show hasn't catapulted the way it should. Because it's a damn, it could, I know I handpicked those ladies. 
So it's an amazing show, and everybody has something to offer. Yeah. So, so you handpicked the women to be on the show? Absolutely. You're not getting it. I casted Married to Medicine. I had two casts. I was picked up at TLC. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. They, they were signed to contracts with Mariah, the Mariah Me Media Agency. That's what makes this so crazy. That's what I'm that, saying to you. See, That's I what I, I handpicked every one of them. I actually handpicked Heavenly for first season, but she didn't have the look that purveyors of pop wanted. So I worked with her, introduced her to a trainer, even though I thought it was petty boots, because you don't have to, you don't have to wear weave or, you know, a, like I feel like everybody's at a different place or whatever, but I enjoyed watching her journey or whatever, but they wouldn't put her on first season. Hmm. But that, that goes to what I, I believe. Like, so yes, I handpicked all these ladies, not Contessa. Like, I didn't, okay. I didn't know. So, you okay. know the ones so I think the, 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 yeah. So, last question here. Mm -hmm. You, you handpicked everyone. So, what does it feel like? <sighs> you like to have handpicked people for a show and they not have your back in certain situations? Let me say this first. I know I said handpick, I, I, maybe cast is a better word. They're not grapes. They're all ladies. They deserve respect. I'm just saying I saw something in every one of them, and it feels horrible. It feels horrible, but I don't want to muddy the waters. It's nice. really not about them. Okay. It's bigger than them. It's like, you know, it's like people bringing up black on black crime in the middle of, you know, us, you know, all this social injustice. So why I, I am not happy that they haven't supported me. It's that's just not on my radar right now. Any of them late. No, I've, I'm just not that mad at them to even focus on that. It's bigger than them. But it is very hurtful. It is. <sighs> it's, more hurtful, let me say this. it's more hurtful that they don't realize that if they treat me this way, the person that brought them to the table, what do they think they will do to them in the end? And I think that's the end right there because this was beautiful. This was Thank lovely. You. I mm -hmm. think that everyone in the comments, for me, I know for me, I almost cried. And everyone, my lash almost came off. Well, thank you so much, Miss Mariah. We're gonna thank you. We're gonna support you. Everyone, please follow I L U V Mariah on Instagram if you yeah. aren't aware. Um, mm -hmm. Follow her. Stay in contact with her. We're going to be praying for a contract because a lot of people in the comments, we've all said that the show would not even be the same without you. So we know a contract is coming, but we're going to yeah. gonna send positive vibes your way for whatever you sue. Pray for my, my presence in the room. Pray for my presence in the boardroom. The show can have longevity. Growth. There we go. Okay. Love it. Well, thank you so much. The, the live is a uh, Glitching a little bit. I want to make sure we can save it before you go. But thank you so much, okay. Mariah. Have a thank great you. day. Okay. Great day. Bye-bye. Take nice care. God bless. Nice to meet you. Okay. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.